Hello and welcome to Mainly Menswear. My name is Dwayne McLeod and I am glad that you're here. After about 10 years of sewing, I have finally decided to make myself a pair of jeans. And I'm going to be using the Quadra Jeans pattern from Thread Theory Design. When I announced that I was going to be embarking on this project, I almost immediately got a request for some videos. So what is going to follow here, I'm going to consider my non-sew along for the Quadra Jeans. I'm just going to be passing along some information that I've learned as I've worked my way through this pattern. My hope is that uh, whatever tips I share here uh, can help improve your sewing. I know that we're all looking for results and the purpose of this channel has always been to help so as get the results that they really want. So without further ado, we'll begin a series on jeans making, in particular the Quadra jeans. As I mentioned, this is not intended to be a jeans sew along. Um, I'm just going to sort of point out some of the things that I'm learning as I work through making these quadra jeans from Thread Theory Design. I can tell you that the instructions are quite extensive. I think there's 16 pages of instructions uh, here. And before we even get started, I just have to say that if you're gonna be making these quadra jeans, you really need to make a muslin. I know that a lot of people really hate making these, but I really think that uh, it's essential, especially with jeans, because this is all about fit, right? Because we're not happy with the fit of the jeans that we find in the stores. Um, I know from my own experience, like I can't wear Levi's. They look absolutely terrible on me. And as a result, I, I don't wear jeans very often. Uh, so to make the muslin process even more disagreeable to a lot of you, I think it's really important that you actually put the zipper into your muslin. Otherwise, it's really hard to analyze the fit. Plus, you get experience in how all the pieces are going to go together here. Um, so uh, I think that's a place to start. So let's just get rid of this big mess and we'll move on to what I have learned so far. So these two pieces, this is the, uh, the zipper shield and the fly shield from the Quadra jeans. And the instructions just say interface, but it really doesn't <laughs> tell you how. And so for people that might be new to garment sewing, I, I think that's kind of a disservice. Anyway, let's talk about um, this little fly shield first. Um, this pattern has what's called a sewn on fly. This is this is this is going to get sewn onto the uh, let's see the <laughs> the le uh, the left side of the trousers or the jeans, um, and so you're gonna you're gonna stitch this on at five eighths. So you're going to want to trim your uh, interfacing back by 5 eighths of an inch along this straight edge and also at the top where it's going to be joining the waistband. Um, the instructions for this part just say to interface it and to finish the edge with either serging, pinking, or a zigzag stitch. So it's, it's pretty uh, rough construction here, uh, but I think uh, knowing how to interface it might, might help. Um, this piece is the zipper shield and again it doesn't tell you how to interface this thing. Eventually it's going to be folded right sides together and you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch along the bottom and turn this piece um, right side out. So in the end it will uh, look like this. Um, I, I just decided that interfacing just half of this was enough for me. Um, but you may want to experiment with whatever fusible interfacing you use. 
again, um, I have trimmed this edge of the interfacing off. This is eventually, you're going to be uh, sewing your zipper tape along this edge and it's going to be placed into the uh, right side of the jeans um, and you're going to be actually sewing through four layers of denim plus the zipper tape here so uh, I think it's just advisable not to have two layers of interfacing as well in that seam so uh, that's just a, a little something that I'm passing along. Next, I'll just talk about the pockets a little bit. I, I saw a pretty neat trick on um, another uh, YouTube video about making the back pockets on a pair of jeans. And what you can do, or what I would advise to get uh, two pockets that match, is to cut out a little cardboard template it could be, mine's out of like an old cereal box, or you could use like any kind of light cardboard packaging and cut it out to the finished uh, shape of your pocket. Then it's just a matter of placing it on your, on your fabric and you'll be able to fold the edges in and press them and you will uh, get pockets that match uh, precisely. It's, it's a great little trick. I also made one for the little coin pocket um, uh, that goes on the front of the jeans. But uh, you can just use uh, whatever kind of light cardboard you might have uh, laying in your uh, recycle bin. What else can I say? Uh, you know, denim is a twill weave. And bec because there's a, it's woven on the diagonal or there's a diagonal aspect to it, um, it can be a little, it can be a little shifty. And um, if you know me, you know I based everything, but I, I, but I really do find that it helps to base this pocket on first and it just helps keep everything uh, uh, nice and straight when you go to do your top stitching. Another thing that I've noticed about this pattern, um, uh, the top edge of the pocket is created by turning a quarter of an inch and then a half inch and then top stitching it. And I, I just wish it was just a little bit beefier here. This is just a personal preference. But in hindsight, I wish that maybe I had either uh, inserted a little half inch strip of like a fusible interfacing here or I, I'm also thinking that I could have extended the pattern up a bit so that I ended up folding it over a half an inch twice just to make it a little bit more substantial here in this back pocket. Uh, the front pockets are really um, pretty straightforward. I, I just followed uh, the, d the directions here. Um, a nice part about this this pattern is uh, you can use like whatever kind of fun fabric you want on the inside. Um, it finishes off with a French seam here at the bottom. So everything is, is really neat on the inside of these pockets. Um, on the inside, uh, on the facing of this pocket, uh, it's kind of hard to show. Uh, the instructions have you stay stitch along this curve and you end up clipping a bit and you will be able to press this this uh, facing into a really nice curve um, and then just edge stitch it in place. Um, I'm working with a fairly uh, kind of a mid-weight denim. This is not a super heavy denim. If you were working with a heavyweight denim, I, I'm just thinking you might not want to fold this back and edge stitch it in place. It could get a little bit bulky. You might be better off to just trim the, uh, the seam allowance off, uh, serge the edge, and then edge stitch it down. Just would be a little uh, less bulky if you're using a really heavy denim. Uh, just a little word about uh, top stitching here. I have the luxury of uh, having two uh, vintage machines here, and so I'm using them both 
in the construction of these genes. Um, I'm using my uh, Singer 301, which we'll pan to here, for all of just the basic stitching. And I just have this set up with um, a navy blue uh, Guterman thread, uh, kind of the basic sew all thread, uh, both uh, in the top and in the bobbin. And I'm, I'm using that just for all the general seaming work. The top stitching is being done on my Singer 201, and I'll just drop a picture of it uh, in here. Um, I'm using a number 80 uh, top stitching thread that I bought a, a bazillion years ago in uh, Steinloff and Stoller in New York. And it's just been uh, sitting around here for about 10 years, I think. Uh, I actually had to kind of blow the dust off it. Anyway, I'm using the uh, a top stitching needle and the, the number 80 thread on top. Um, in the bobbin, I'm using the navy blue uh, Sewall Guterman thread. And uh, that kind of makes your uh, top stitching pop a little bit more because you've got that little... Uh, blue bobbin thread kind of coming up between every stitch of your uh, top stitching thread. And it just kind of gives you uh, the look that um, you're uh, aiming for. Um, if you use a, a matching thread in the bobbin for your top stitching, uh, it'll just look like a solid line. Uh, so that's uh, something that my uh, good sewing bu buddy, uh, Kyle Burkhart, uh, passed along to me. Uh, so at this point, uh, I'm going to be deviating from the instructions and you may want to refer to the video that I did on the Jedediah pant because I'm going to alter the order of sewing and I'm going to get the zipper in now. I think you can, I've, I'll just flip it over. I've got a couple uh, tailor tacks here. I'm going to just sew the fronts together uh, from the bottom tailor tack down to a, a little bit uh, more than five eighths uh, from the bottom edge, like maybe something like uh, three quarters or so. Just make this little tiny seam and then you'll be able to put the zipper in flat. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll see the result in the next video. Um, that's it for this uh, part of this little uh, quadra jeans non sew along. I, I hope that these uh, tips are helpful. I wish you all happy sewing and I will be catching up with you later. Bye bye.